Now, here with opinion is Thane Rosenbaum, University Professor at Turo College and Senior Analyst for JBS. Hello, I'm Thane Rosenbaum. On Sunday, January 5th, over 25,000 people marched across the Brooklyn Bridge, all in solidarity with Orthodox Jews who have been victimized in the New York area over the past two years. This year alone, there have been over 200 anti-Semitic acts of violence against Hasidic communities in Williamsburg, Crown Heights, Borough Park, Jersey City, and Muncie. These included killings, beatings, and humiliations. Wigs were ripped off from heads. Eggs were thrown at parents and their children. A brick was used as a weapon to knock the teeth out of a man. Another brick smashed the window of a school for Hasidic girls. New York City is becoming like Paris, and not in the good way. In Paris, Jews have had their fingers cut off. They've been tossed off balconies. An 85-year-old Holocaust survivor was stabbed and burned to her death in her apartment. French wine and cheese are one thing, but importing violence against Jews is nothing to emulate. Who believed that this sort of thing could now happen here? Most of the anti-Semitic hate crimes in Europe were committed by Islamic extremists. These recent attacks against Hasidic Jews have come mainly from African Americans. The murders in the synagogues in Pittsburgh in 2018 and Poway in 2019 were from white supremacists. The Jersey City killings were committed by black separatists. Even in the year 2020, anti-Semitism continues to attract equal opportunity haters, people who have little else in common other than the joy they experience at the very thought of dead Jews. But for one shiny and frigid moment in a symbolic statement that featured the same communal resolve as those rallies to liberate Russian Jewry from the Cold War, secular Jews reunited in the common purpose of responding to a new crisis in Jewish life. This time, all denominations were on deck, summoned to defend the Hasidic Jews who live very separate lives from the American mainstream. The marchers came from everywhere, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Cleveland, and of course, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And there were non-Jews too, perhaps not as many as one would have hoped, but they were there. Ironically, the one group that was underrepresented were the Hasidim themselves. Apparently, there's modesty and seclusion even when it comes to their own self-defense. People carried signs and waved American and Israeli flags. They locked arms and sang songs. And as Jews so often do, they contemplated where to have lunch. Crossing over to the East River like a much earlier tribe of Jews who required the parting of a sea in order to make it to the other side, this was most definitely not an exodus, but an affirmation of belonging. The Brooklyn Bridge would lead them not to the promised land, but to the promises of this land, the guarantees of citizenship and the assurances of equal protection. Jews in America are free to light Hanukkah candles without fear of being assaulted on the streets of their own neighborhoods. No price can be placed on the head of Jews because that's where their yarmulkes go. For the Jews of Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Bridge always represented a gateway to the mysteries of Manhattan. But after this rally, it may come to also represent a time when the mysteries of Hasidim of Brooklyn lured 25,000 people to rally in their defense. I'm Thane Rosenbaum for JVS.